Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now, you may notice the background's a little bit different. That's because I actually moved out of my teeny tiny share house and now I live in a teeny tiny apartment where I actually have space for a big bookshelf, which I've put most of my antique things on. Um, still getting used to the new setup and the new furniture and stuff, so I'll probably change the way this looks maybe in the future. I haven't really figured all that out yet. Now, those of you watching right now can probably tell I'm wearing a sort of synthetic fur, which kind of goes against my my ethics or my beliefs, you know, I, I prefer to wear fully antique stuff. Moving here was incredibly expensive and also it's very cold right now as it's the winter and so I am wearing a hanten, which is like a Japanese winter kind of jacket just for just for around the home, kind of like a dressing gown, um, but unfortunately yeah it does have um, synthetic fur on it, but it's very very warm so and it was very cheap, it was about 4,000, 5,000 yen, so it's kind of cheap and it keeps me warm so I'm going to be wearing it throughout the video, sorry. It's not uh, historically Edwardian, um, but these are worn uh, historically in Japan in the winter, but this is definitely not a historical replication. This is absolutely modern, so sorry. So in today's video I wanted to talk about starching collars. Now if you have antique collars like these winged collars here, these are genuine antiques which are really heavily starched and polished, um, you'll have a little bit of trouble because you have to starch these in a completely different way to the way I'm about to show you. These ones will be boiled and completely soaked in a starch solution, then they'll be put through, then they'll be spun to spin the starch out, then they'll be put, you know, they'll be put through many processes including um, not machinery, but tools, heavy tools in factories, which we can't do in our homes today. So what I do and what I wear, sorry, these are really loud. What I wear most of the time are washable collars, but I also starch them. So uh, let me show you one here. So inside, this is a wooden a collar box with kind of a, it's like Japanese detailing on it. So if I open this up, here are, here are some collars, not all of my collars. The ones I'll be starching today aren't in here. So here's a winged collar. This one's from Darcy Clothing, and it is a washable collar. So for comparison, this one's a little bit taller than these ones. This one is of the Edwardian style. It's a lot taller. This one is probably more uh, 20s, 30s, so it's a little bit shorter. But you can see perhaps a color difference. This one is a little bit yellow because starch does go yellow after a while. But yeah, you can see these are two different collars. Now, this one is much more stiff than this one. And the washable collars are pretty stiff, but they're not incredibly stiff. Um, so you can see it keeps its shape, but it can be bent. Um, this one, it keeps its shape, and it can, can't really be bent without kind of cracking or making horrible noises. When you buy these washable collars, the idea is that you can wear them without starch. That's the point, that's why they're washable. Um, starched collars, if you didn't know, once you have starch in them, which is like a potato starch or a corn starch, um, you can't you can't wash them because you'll ruin the starch and they'll become soft. So what the washable thing is that it will stay stiff even if you wash it in your washing machine or by hand. I do all of mine by hand. I don't trust the washing machine. It ruined one of my collars. Um, but the thing is, if you wear these collars, and maybe I have an example, um, I might show a few example photos, but if you wear these collars without starch, at the back here, where the collar rubs up against, you know, your waistcoat or maybe your jacket, it will actually turn black um, and it will get damaged and that will stain. It will rub the fibres off and it will stain the white collar and in my experience it's been impossible to get out and it happens with literally every single one of my collars on any of my waistcoats turn down standing collars they all do the same thing one of the good things about starch is that it actually provides a protective layer so if you do get any staining or anything on on the collar itself when you wash the starch out the stain comes off with the starch and the and the the fabric is usually fine underneath which is one of the great advantages of starch but these washable collars don't have that so they're kind of vulnerable so what i do is i like to starch these as well but here's the thing you can't heat these collars up. You can't take them over 40 or 45 degrees, I think. I'll put a little picture here from the website. If you do, the glue or whatever was used to stiffen this 
uh, will get ruined and the collar will no longer be washable. So what I do is I use a spray starch and an iron. So you can't wash these with hot water and you can't steam them, but you can iron them. Ironing them is fine. So yeah, I use a, a spray starch, I spray it on one side and then I press it over and then I repeat and press it over and I just keep repeating and I do it on the other side as well. And uh, eventually you build up a thick layer, not quite as thick as you would get if you soaked it in starch, quite a thick layer of starch on there just to give it that little extra layer of protection so I thought I'd kind of show you through that and show you what I do and hopefully if you wear washable collars or if you're thinking about wearing washable collars this will help them last longer it will protect the fibers it will protect them from staining and it will protect them from uh, all the gross stuff that comes off when you sweat anyway without further ado why don't we starch some collars I'm very pleased to finally have enough space to actually have an ironing board in my room now I, I'm aware you can't see my face, but I really don't have a good setup for filming this, so I, I just thought I'd do it in front of the camera. And if I'd wanted you to see my face, I would have had to have sat down on the bed here. But I don't think ironing while sitting down is very safe, in case I drop that on my lap, which I don't want to do. So here we have three Darcy collars that I'm going to starch. This one I actually got maybe a year or two ago, so it's a little bit greyer than the other ones. Okay, so let's go over the basic things that you're going to need to do this. First of all, you will need all of your collars. Um, you will also need an iron without steam, so turn off the steam and make sure there's no water in here because, like I said earlier, we don't want to put any steam or water on these and then heat it up. Iron is unhappy. Okay. So, the next thing you'll need is you'll need some... Uh, this one's called a cooking sheet. You need some kind of like baking paper or cooking paper. This is so that the starch doesn't get all over your ironing board and also so that it doesn't stick to your iron. We'll get to that in a minute, so you need some of that. The next thing you'll need are collar studs for however many collars you're doing. I'm doing three collars, so I need three studs, clean studs, pristine studs, because you don't want to make these dirty. Um, and the reason you want those is you're going to put those through the front of the collar so that it actually holds its shape. Um, once it's been starched because we don't have machines and presses that can do that for us We're going to press everything flat then we're going to shape the collars afterwards um, the final thing you'll need then is The spray starch now my one is obviously I'm in Japan. So this is in Japanese uh, Top value is the brand but you it's basically top value in English But you're not going to find that brand wherever you are this one just says I don't your spray nori which basically means glue for use with an iron um, but you know, just look for spray starch. People often ask me, what brand of this do you use? What brand of that do you use? And I know people want to know, but you know, I, you know, I, I don't live in England anymore. Um, so yeah, this is the, the brand I'm using. It's uh, not very expensive spray starch. So let's get started. I think we'll start with the, with the, the oldest collar because I'm not so worried if that gets ruined. I haven't tried with this paper before. But what you want to do, grease proof paper is what it's called, grease proof paper. Okay, so you want to lay the paper down like so on your ironing board, so your ironing board doesn't get filthy. And make it a little bit longer than your actual collar itself. Probably wanted this one a little bit longer. So what you want to do is take your spray starch and give it a good dowsing. Make sure it's completely covered with spray starch. Um, however much you put on is just how long it will take to dry. So now I've done that, I actually want to take another sheet and make it about the same size. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that sheet over the sprayed collar to protect my iron. Um, and then we're just going to uh, gently iron over the collar. You don't want any crinkles in the paper because this will translate onto the collar itself. So just gently iron that over like so. Now D Darcy Clothing may not recommend this. I'm just showing you what I do, okay? So we're going to take that off um, and we'll see if it's dry. It's a little bit steamy now. That's just the starch drying. So I think we'll give it once more. And basically with the iron, we're just drying the starch. So I want to build up layers. I don't know if any of you have ever used latex, liquid latex. 
you paint a little bit of latex on a model or a sculpture, you let it dry, and then you put some more latex on. And that's basically what we're doing here. So I'm happy that that's kind of dry now. So I'm gonna do it again. And it really is up to you. Make sure there's no dust or any hairs or any fluff that gets on it because you will seal it in with the starch. So it's up to you how, how many layers you want to put on it, how stiff you want to make everything. Now uh, that's completely your choice. Um, obviously we use cooking paper because it's grease proof but also because it can handle high temperatures. So I'll basically just repeat this another five or six times on this side then I'll turn it over and I'll do the other side. And it does take a while. One collar could take about five or ten minutes to fully starch. But for me, it's completely worth it. I would also like to say that if you're doing it the proper way uh, and you're actually like, uh, and you're actually putting the collars into a solution of starch in your home, this is the same process. So once you've got that collar and you've uh, wicked away all of the excess starch, you'd literally just do this process but you just wouldn't keep spraying it. You would just lay it on the paper, iron it, and you would be done. But because I haven't uh, dipped this into starch, I have to spray it. Okay, so we've done six layers on this side. Now we're gonna flip it over and do the other side, the inside, okay? Basically the exact same thing. Okay, so this is the final layer. You will see it steaming. The good thing with Darcy collars is that because they're already stiff, or any washable collar, because they're already stiff, you don't have to worry about trying to avoid wrinkles in the fabric because the fabric already cannot wrinkle. I'll just go over it a few times. Make sure it's nice and hot, which will help it dry. I'm going to leave it for a little while to cool down. Right, so now that it's kind of cooled down, it's still going to be very wet and very sticky, but that's good because we're going to mold it into shape. So basically with this one, we're just going to fold, we're going to fold it over and then we're going to bring it round, tuck it under as we normally do, take our stud, in fact, let's put it through the first one first, and then we can put it through the second one. Now, it's going to be very wet and sticky at this point, so you will have to wash your hands afterwards. Yeah, basically, there you go. So, there you go, it's set like that, and then I will just leave that for a day, for a few hours, just until it's completely dry, and then that will be a nice, stiff collar. Now, some people dry them upside down to avoid wrinkling this area so up to you how you want to do that I think I might leave mine upside down and uh, just hope it dries off and is really stiff okay guys so here are the collars I let I left them to dry on this grease proof paper and you can see now they are very 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 stiff indeed so So normally the Darcy collars are a little bit softer, but this is this is 12 layers of spray starch, um, and they're all dry now, and they're very very hard. You can kind of hear it. They're very very hard. Um, yeah, there's there's still a little bit of flex in them, obviously, because they are fabric, but they're very very tough. And um, other than the fact that they get you know as stiff as original collars. The other reason to do this is, of course, as I mentioned earlier, to avoid staining like this, which uh, which happened before I started starching them. You can see there's a black stain here. There's a bit of a black smudge here. That's from rubbing up against the waistcoat. I don't think this one has it so bad. You can kind of see it a little bit there at the back. That's where the um, the stud goes through. And where, where the collars are slightly um, soft, the stud kind of bends the back part. So if you don't starch it stiff, this will get all bent, and that's why that little spot gets really worn. And uh, on the back here, there's a little bit of staining, but not too bad. So in the future, I'll always do this before 
um, before I wear them, but these I got quite some time ago, so I didn't really think about it back then. Well, I didn't know it was a problem back then. So as you can see guys, the starching process was a complete success. There wasn't any warping, we didn't steam the collars, we didn't wet them or do anything bad to them. They're just really nice and hard. This one I've been wearing for about four days now, so this will be the fourth wear and it still looks fine. It's not really gone yellow, the collar at the back isn't blackened, it's still a nice white colour. Yeah, so as you can see I've paired it with a, a burgundy tie, a pink shirt and I've got a navy waistcoat on here. Thank you so much for watching, I hope this helps you with your collars. I hope your collars can be just as stiff and hard as if they were fully starched in the factories even though they're either washable or soft collars that you've just used a simple and cheap spray starch. Now this is the modern way to do it or as I like to do it in the modern world. We obviously don't have the tools that they would have used available to us today, so we can't quite starch it in the same way that they used to do. But if this video is popular and people are interested to see the kind of more historical way to do it, the more difficult way to do it, then I'll be so happy to show you how to do that. And if you are interested in starched detachable collars, but you're worried about where to buy shirts from, or you don't have any shirts, but you do have some collars, then stay tuned because in my next video, which I've already filmed and started editing, I'll show you how to make this detachable collar shirt. This one is in pink and this is actually the one I show you in the video so already you can see it working very nicely here. I know that there are already some videos on how to do this but my method is almost completely different and I have a few extra steps that will make the shirt look much more authentic and it will make it work a little bit better. So I'm sure you'll find it very interesting. Please stay tuned and thanks for watching. Uh, end of video! Done!